Hey everybody, it's Joe, the 3D printing professor. I've got a sample of tungsten filled filament from my friends at Toy Builders Lab, and I'm gonna make another chest set. But what I don't have is one of those fancy nozzles to put it through. Well, let's put it through one of my regular nozzles. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Boy. everybody, it's Joe. Welcome back to the workbench. So yeah, I've got a sample of tungsten filled filament from my friends at Toy Builders Lab. Thank you very much for that. And I'm going to be printing today the Dutchman self-supported chess set. It's a chess set that I, it's, it's not that impressive looking, but it does have a really fantastic looking knight and hey, the knight makes the set, you know. So Unfortunately, I didn't buy one of the fancy nozzles to put it through. They recommend that you put this through a nozzle with a wider hole in it, 0.6 instead of 0.4 millimeters, and that it's made out of a more hardened material than just regular brass. Now, I've got a couple of nozzles that I just don't care about. They're old, they're at the end of their life, and I've got replacements for them, so let's just put it through that, and honestly, let's see what's the worst that can happen. So there we go, and it printed actually pretty good. Not a lot of uh, problems that I could see with it. Man, it looks really good. So one thing I didn't mention about this material is it is heavy. I mean, even just a little sample of it feels heavier in your hand than it should be. And it doesn't particularly look like metal, but it feels really heavy and it feels like a metal. Even though this is a hollow 3D print, this just feels heavier than it should be. That's really cool. Now, I did print the rest of the set as well. And as I printed, I noticed, like for instance, the, the rook here. The top just didn't fill in well. Same thing with the queen. It just had a big gap in it. And then I decided I wanted to try the knight again, but at a lower layer height. And with every print, the print quality got worse and even worse that's when i decided to check my nozzle sure enough my nozzle had been reamed out i can't tell you how big this is but it's definitely not the pinhole that you normally expect to see in here this thing is huge it really does wreck your nozzles if you try and do it and you're before you finish this is just the one sample going through this nozzle. This is worthless. The reason why the print quality gets so bad as the nozzle gets bigger is that as the nozzle gets bigger, it's not pushing through enough plastic to fill that entire nozzle. So there's a lot of give in the space and it just, it looks awful. It's really not even worth doing if you don't have the good nozzles. Or you know, again, if you have an old nozzle that you don't care about, but you won't get through even the sample amount before it destroys your nozzle. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to go ahead and spring for the better nozzle and we'll do it right this time. But this is an ABS based plastic. And so as an ABS based plastic, could it be smoothed with a little bit of acetone? Let's find out. I mean, 
these were some of the later prints, this, and so the finish on it was not very good, and I maybe didn't use enough acetone. I should probably use more acetone, but the effect is amazing. Now it really looks like metal. It's got that, not just the shine of like a smooth print, it's got kind of a luster of a metal to it. This is really amazing and absolutely making me want to get a good nozzle and try this out. Now, one thing that I do have to mention about this filament, here's, here's one of the nights, or one of the pawns that didn't come off very well. This stuff is brittle. Like even just a filament is almost as brittle as the wood fill filament that I've used in the past. But it breaks really easy. And this I did with like three or four layers, I think three layers. So it really should have had better adhesion than that. But I'm able to just break this with my fingers. In fact, the first one that I did, I only did one shell because I, I was an idiot. I had my settings set for something else and so I just threw it through one shell and it cracked like an eggshell under my fingers. I'm definitely gonna be doing this right and smoothing the whole set and putting them on my show off shelf because it's just way cool to see a print that looks and feels like metal. Limited application, practical application is not really high. I wonder how the smoothed one holds. Yeah, still brittle even after the smoothing process. So still a super cool material that I do want to experiment some more with, but I don't see a lot of practical application for. If you're interested in trying this out, if you want something that aesthetically looks and feels like metal, you should check it out, but keep in mind, Get the good nozzles or you will regret it. So, quick afterward on 3D printing the tungsten filled G-Mass chest set. Uh, after printing the, all of the pieces and getting them all messed smooth, I wanted to see what would happen if I printed one with nearly 100% infill. And that's these parts. The weight difference in this, you, you hand this to somebody and it's surprising how heavy it is, especially if they're used to using and handling 3D printed parts, it's just got a weight to it. But then I took it and I put it through the acetone vapor, which I really like that we have a metallic filament that you can put through the acetone vapor, but I forgot something. And this is my fault. I should have known this. Whenever you 3D print something nearly 100% infill or even 100% infill. Now, I didn't do these at 100% infill because well, packing density is why. If you don't have your packing density set right, you're going to put too much plastic in there. Generally speaking, anything over about 85% might as well be 100%. Here's a couple of prints that I didn't smooth. This one I printed at 85%, and you can see it's, it's practically filled. This one was printed at 60%, and yeah, there's little gaps in there, but really not very much. But the problem comes in smoothing it. I'm going to get you a close-up picture of this, but there are some nasty zits on the bottom of this. Bubbles that appeared in the printing process. Why? Well, because 3D printing traps air in it, even at 100%. And when you smooth out the prints in acetone, the outside becomes softer, pliable, and those air bubbles gather together and try to escape to the surface. But then the surface re-solidifies afterwards, and the result are these nasty little zits. So as much as I want to keep these parts around just to show off, hey, how cool is this? They really look terrible with the finish. I took and tried to pop one of these zits and smooth the thing out. And the result was a lot of tiny little holes, uh, little air pockets that I didn't previously know. When I wiped off the top layer of acetone, those all came to the surface. It got worse and worse the more I tried to do this. So in the end, do I think that this tungsten G-Mass uh, filament is worth it? I really don't know. Like I said, it's considerably more brittle than normal ABS. You are sacrificing uh, integrity. And like I said, this was the 60% the infill. It shouldn't have broken off that easy, but this is what? A, a nearly a half an inch across and it has no structural integrity. So you're getting something that is worse as a material, but looks good. Is there any utility for it beyond something pretty to sit on your shelf? 
I'm really impressed with how well it smooths out. It looks beautiful when you smooth it out. And as a piece to look at, it's got its utility, but that's about it. Functionally, I wouldn't use this stuff for anything. It's just too brittle. So thank you very much for watching again. Has my tie been retarded this whole time?